Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 Deviations. In today's video, I would like to cover the integration by parts tabular method. Now, of course, this is also known as the tic-tac-toe method. I like to call it the tic-tac-toe method that brings a little bit more fun into our Calculus 2 world. So, in today's video, I would like to introduce this method, and we are also going to conclude this method. We're going to do a few examples. This is really just a general way to do integration by parts multiple times instead of needing to go through tons of iterations. Now, when we do integration by parts multiple times, um, especially when we're doing it three, four, five, six, seven times, what we're really thinking about is we're thinking about reducing algebraic terms. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about monomial terms, something like um, ax, um, maybe ax to the n power, right? And we can reduce this, sometimes it takes a while, to zero when we differentiate it. So we differentiate this and then it gets to zero at some point. And this is what we take advantage of in the tic-tac-toe method. When we have something like a times x to the n times a transcendental infinitely differentiable function, maybe like e to the x. So let us discuss the tabular method. So let's talk about the way this works um, might seem fairly abstract, don't worry, we've got a couple of examples coming your way right after this. So, first, we need to determine that integration by parts must be used. We must have an integral that includes a product of two functions. Otherwise, we are probably wasting our time doing integration by parts, otherwise maybe a simple rule or a substitution might work, or some of the many integration techniques that we will be teaching in the future. So, we need to determine that IBP is applicable. So next what we do is we create a table with um, derivative and integral as columns. So what we do is we set up a table. We have a d by dx column and we have an integral column. And I also like to have a sine column just so that we are clear with what we're doing. And there's our table. And what we do, we insert u into the first row and dv into the first row of the integral. So this is gonna be u here, and this is gonna be dv. Um, and we always start off our thing here with a, um, we, we leave this blank because this, at this point, this isn't gonna be very important to us yet. Then what we do is we differentiate u until it becomes zero and integrate dv the same amount of time. So I'm gonna integrate, I'm gonna differentiate u one, two, three, four, then that'll be, um, that'll be our differentiated u, so du by dx, then maybe we'll have that n times, that'll be n times there. And then we'll also integrate dv the same amount of times until we get to our um, thing here, what we're going to have there, our nth integral. So what we do then is we take this column here and we do plus minus plus minus, we have dot 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 there, um, and then what we do is we multiply through, so u goes to here and then we multiply that by the positive sign. Then we do the second one to the third and then that gets multiplied by the negative sign. Then we do that to there and that gets multiplied by the positive sign. And we keep on going until this is zero, then that's not gonna matter. Then we go from the second to last to the last integral, and then we multiply that by whatever sign it happens to be there. So we multiply diagonally to add each entry with alternating sign, as you can see right there. And then of course we add a plus C, and then we're finished with our integral there. Okay, so again, this may have seemed fairly confusing, so let's do an example. So, Let's say I want to take the integral of x to the fourth times e to the x dx. Now what we can see here is we have a fourth order monomial. We have x to the fourth. So this is something that if I did traditional integration by parts, I would need to do that quite a lot of times. But now we have this tabular method and that's going to be helpful. So as I said, we set up a d by dx column. We set up a, an integral column and we set up a plus or minus column. So now we first need to determine what's our u going to be and what's our dv going to be. Now, of course, we know that our u is almost certainly going to be this um, x to the fourth. So u equals x to the fourth. 
and dv by process of deduction is equal to e to the x dx. Now we can ignore this differential for this method. So I'm gonna show you the full table and we're gonna work through it together. So we have our derivative column, we have our integral column and we have our sine column. So we go start with the um, x to the fourth monomial and we're differentiating that until it gets to zero. So we take the first derivative, we get four x cubed. Take the second derivative, we get 12x squared. We take the third derivative, we get 24x. We take the fourth derivative, we get 24. Then that gets reduced to a constant of zero, um, or just zero. And then if I integrate e to the x, that stays e to the x. So we've got e to the x all the way across. So first what we do is we multiply x to the fourth by e to the x by a positive sign. And that is our term right here. And then we also take 4x to the third and we multiply that by e to the x and a negative sign. That gives us 4x to the third e to the x multiplied by negative. Then we get here 12x squared times e to the x times positive sign. That gives us this term. Then we get 24x times e to the x times negative sign. That gives us this term. Multiply 24 by e to the x times a positive sign gives us this term. Then if I were to multiply zero by the x, that'd be zero. So we discard that. And that's a successful integration by parts. But we've got five terms here. So this would have taken so long to deal with otherwise. So we're glad that we have our integration by parts tabular method tool. So as you can see, this was something that was fairly simple because our integrals were fairly simple. And again, when we use these, um, when we have the liate, so we have L I a T E. What we use tabular for is we use tabular for the algebraic terms, the x to the n, ax to the n, or even polynomials. We can use it for polynomials as well if you're multiplying that by something like e to the x. We also use our um, tabular method for t and e, usually base e for the exponential, and for these, usually sine and cosine. We'll be going over other ways to integrate sine and cosine on their own, along with their other trigonometric counterparts. All right, so let's do another example. So I have for us the integral of x to the cubed, x to the third times the sine of x dx. Now again, we see an um, we see a trig we see a trig term, so we know that should be our dv. So dv is going to be sine of x dx, and then we also see that our um, u term should be the algebraic term, x cubed. So now that we have our two terms here, um, we can now perform our tabular integration. So here we have our full table. So we're gonna take x cubed and we're gonna differentiate that until we get to zero. x cubed, take the first derivative, we get three x squared. Take the second derivative, we get six x. Take the third derivative, we get six. Take the fourth derivative, we get zero. Now we're at zero. We've got all of our terms lined up in the first column. Now for the next column, we need to remember our trig integrals. So sine of x goes to negative cosine of x, goes to negative sine of x, goes to cosine of x, goes to sine of x. And that corresponds to our um, differentiated term, so we have enough. And then we also have our plus minus plus minus, and we are all set to go for our answer. So first what we do, is we take this x cubed times negative cosine of x, multiply that by positive, that gives us negative x cubed cosine of x. And then we take 3x squared times negative sine of x times a negative sine, which gives us 3x squared sine of x. So we've got the negative here, we've got the positive here. Then we take 6x and we multiply that by cosine of x and our positive sign. That gives us plus 6x cosine of x. Then we take 6 times sine of x times the negative sine. And that gives us negative 6 sine of x. So that gives us our final answer, of course, with a plus c tacked on at the end. Well, thank you very much for watching this video of three deviations. That was two examples involving the tabular method of integration. I'm sure that you found it to be very helpful, and it is going to play a large part in finding your integrations, um, your antiderivatives when you're integrating by parts more than once. In the next video, we're going to look at some more tricky examples involving 
um, integration by parts once. So we kind of introduced integration by parts just with a simple um, monomial times a trig function. But in the next video, we're going to look at some really tricky integration by parts examples. Then we are going to be going into definite integration with integration by parts. And after that, we are going to be looking at some um, trigonometric reduction formulas, kind of bringing our way into the trig world where we are going to be spending a lot of time after we talk about integration by parts. All right. Well, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.